Hello and welcome to this next exercise. Uh, now we're going to be looking again at a test on two population variances. But what I'm doing in this problem, I'm actually going to bring together now some issues from both uh, module 11, tests on two population variances, and module 10, where we looked at uh, test on two population means, or test on a difference in means. Both of these tests give us different information about these two distributions. A test on means tells us where do these distributions lie relative to one another. Are their means the same? So are they sitting on top of each other? Or is one greater than the other or less than the other? So are they spread apart? So we're looking at a test of location of these two distributions. The test on variance tells us something about their relative shape. Is one fatter or skinnier than the other? Or are they about the same? So we're looking at tests on two different parameters each one gives us slightly different information about these two distributions. So I'm probably going to do this one in two videos because A and B, A and B are looking at the test on variance uh, and finally C and D that's looking at the test on mean. So I'll separate this problem into two um, just to keep the videos relatively short. Okay, so let's get into it. Here, this is kind of themed after a recent problem we had in our own office building. Modern office buildings often have high-tech centralized heating and cooling systems. These can greatly improve energy efficiency if they're used properly. A problem can arise if, in response to being too cold, one person decides to bring their own private space heater for their office. By heating their own space, they may cause the thermostats to think that the building is warmer than it actually is. The result is that the heating system fails to turn on in one area because the other area is being heated by a different source. The result is that others become cold, causing them to all bring their own space heaters and the problem continues. Okay, now let's get into some statistics. So, in the first section, so we're taking measurements in two different sections of the building. In the first section, the average temperature across 15 locations was 28, uh, sorry, 20.8 degrees Celsius with a standard deviation of 2.8. In the second location, the average temperature across 21 locations was 18, I guess 18 degrees Celsius as well, with a standard deviation of 1.9. So here we have these two sample distributions. We have a sample mean and standard deviation of one, sample mean and standard deviation of the other. Now let's compare them. So the first thing we'll do, we'll develop a test to determine if there's a difference between the two, uh, a difference in the variance between the two sections. So here's our test for a difference in the variance. So a difference, this sounds to me like we're doing a two-tailed test. So it doesn't say anywhere that we're looking to see that one is warmer, colder, or has a, a larger variance or lower variance. We're just testing to see if there's a difference. So this is going to be just something like this. The variance of population one is equal to the variance of population two, or it's not equal to the variance of population two. Uh, we'll perform this test at the alpha O5 level of significance. Now, when we calculate the test statistic, remember, these test statistics, due to the limitations of the distribution tables, these test statistics are set up such that the sample variance in the numerator is greater than, is the greater of the two. It's the larger one uh, of those two sample variances. So this determines for us which population is going to be one and which population is going to be two. So when I look at our data, here I've got one sample standard deviation there and another one there. So what that means is that I'm looking at the one section, so the first section is 2.8, so I guess we'll keep our subscripts the same. So a sample variance for the first section is my larger one, and this is then my second one, has the smaller standard deviation, and so we've got them defined. S1, the first sample variance, corresponds with the first section, and the second section is S2. So nothing too out of the ordinary here, I suppose. So when we calculate our test statistic, this is going to be 2.8. Now this is a standard deviation, so that has to be 2.8 squared divided by 1.9 squared, 
And so this gives us our value of 2.8 squared divided by 1.9 squared equals 2.17. 2.17. Okay, so we have our test statistic. Now we need to know what is our what distribution are we working with? I'm going to come down here. Let's find the critical value. I have in the numerator, I have 15 observations, so 14 degrees of freedom in the numerator. In the denominator, I have 21 locations, so that's 20 degrees of freedom in the denominator. And we'll perform this test at the alpha 05 level of significance. This is a two tailed test. So alpha divided by 2 is equal to 0 0.025. So we have to take that into account when we're getting our critical value, the same as any other two-tailed test that we are working with. So let's go to our F tables. And we have, oops, let me remind myself, 14 and 20 degrees of freedom. So numerator, 14. Well, we don't have 14, so we'll have to round it to 15. And 20, well, we have to scroll down a little bit. Here's 20, and again, here's 15. So where those come together, here's our four critical values, and here's our four corresponding probabilities. I don't know if you can hear my dog growling over here. I think there's another dog out in the hallway that she's getting excited about. So here we've got our four critical values. Now we have an alpha was 0 0.05, alpha divided by 2, 0.025. So here's that 0 0.025 probability. So we come across and there's our critical value, 2.573. So we go back to our problem. We have our critical value is 2.573. So how can we use this? Well, it's very similar. When we're looking at that distribution, whatever is its shape, we're going to reject if our test statistic is too large, reject if our test statistic is too small. Now, because of how we have formulated our test statistic, we know it's formulated in a way that it will always fall to the upper side of the distribution. So here that critical value is 2.573. Our test statistic is 2.17. Given that zero is down here, 2.17 is somewhere in this space here. So this falls into our do not reject space using the critical value approach. Now, let's go back and use our p-value approach. So we already know, as far as our test on variances go, we do not reject. I have insufficient evidence to show that there's a difference in the variance of temperatures between these two locations. Let's do our uh, p-value approach. So my test statistic, I need this value here, 2.17. Coming back to our f-distribution, 2.17 2.17 lies right in between here well, somewhere in between those two values so these are the two probabilities of interest if my test statistic lies between these two critical values then my probability of interest lies between these two probabilities just like every other two-tailed test that we've done our p-value is going to be those probabilities times 2. So this is going to be between 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. So if I come back to my problem, I'll have a p-value that is less than 0 0.2 and greater than 0 0.1. And again, that's consistent with our conclusion using the critical value approach. Comparing that to an alpha of 0 0.05, we absolutely do not have sufficient evidence to reject. I am unable to show that there's a difference between these two variances of temperatures between these two locations. Okay, so that's it for our test on variance. 
I'll start another video and we'll look at comparing the means between these two. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.